channel and uh, we're going to be beginning with uh, the oral path again and the topic for today is salivary gland so the first thing in the salivary glands again it's an important topic and the important topics in the salivary gland that uh, comes under the INBD exam are the mucosal renula uh there is uh sialolithiasis and do not forget uh, definitely about the s chakran syndrome these are few important topics uh, i will be trying to cover as much as i can so let's begin with so the first uh, topic under the salivary gland that we will be studying today is the mucosal so what is mucosal so in mucosal there are basically two types of um, uh, cysts that we will be studying the one is the mucus extravasation cyst and the second one will be the mucus retention cyst so how you can actually differentiate between these two the term mucosal encompasses a phenomenon which has two different pathogenesis clinically it appears as a dome-shaped fluctuant swelling that range from a few millimeter to few centimeter in diameter so the first one actually uh, we will be studying is the mucus extravasation cyst now as the name suggests mucus extravasation cyst it results from an extravasation of fluid into the surrounding tissue after a traumatic break in the continuity of a minor salivary gland please pay attention over the word it is a traumatic break right and what is the most common site that is the lip and it occurs more common than the mucus uh, retention cyst. It is painless and maybe even bluish in color. And another thing about uh, the differentiating point between mucus extravasation cyst and the mucus retention cyst is that a mucosal is not a true cyst. Now, this is normally how it even looks uh, in a patient. Uh, even clinically while doing patient, I saw it and this is how exactly it looked like. Now, the second one we will be studying is the mucus retention cyst. Again, there is an obstruction. Now, the, again, I'm going to emphasize more over the point, uh, differentiating point between mucus retention cyst and the mucus extravasation cyst. Mucus uh, ec uh, extravasation cyst is a traumatic break. This is basically an obstruction in the ductal opening. So whenever there is an obstruction, uh, the, su the saliva gets accumulated there, which lead to a swelling in the mouth. It is a true developmental cyst that is lined by an epithelium. Again, it is less common than the extravasation cyst and the common age is um, 50 and older. It is asymptomatic and surgical and uh, excision with the removal of the associated gland is the treatment plan for this. And uh, this is the picture of a mucus retention cyst. Now, the second one we will be talking about is ranula. There are lots of questions in the INBD exam about ranula. Now, what is basically a ranula? Again, it is a mucosal, but it occurs in the floor of the mouth. Although the source is usually the sublingual gland, but it may arise from the submandibular gland or other minor salivary glands uh, like in the floor of the mouth. It uh, presents as a blue fluctuant dome-shaped swelling in the floor of the mouth that are usually larger than mucosal. So this is another differentiating point between the ranula and the mucosal that it, uh, it is larger in size and it is present in the floor of the mouth. It is located lateral to the midline. The ranula increases in size just before or during a meal and decreases in size between the meal. Treatment is mass supplization and uh, the another uh, the treatment is basically mass supplization but uh, the, uh, the another treatment can also be the um, you can remove the sublingual gland. Now this is how a ranula looks like. It is, uh, it is lateral to the midline as we have studied in the previous slide and it is a dome shaped swelling which is larger than the mucosal and it could be bluish in color. You can clearly see the blue color. Now the next one we are going to cover under the salivary gland is the maxillary sinus retention cyst or the enteral pseudo cyst. I do not think it is a very important um, uh, topic to be covered but still like while solving questions it does come uh, you know in the options this name so it's better to know a little bit about it now maxillary sinus retention cyst is often noticed as an incidental finding on a radiograph made for other purposes so a patient comes to your clinic and you are trying to um, you know treat a person for something and you take a radiograph and this is uh, you know is it uh, and you just 
find that there is a maxillary retention cyst so that that's why an incidental finding the maxillary sinus is the most common site of enteral pseudo cyst it may represent blockage of the sinus seromucous gland or a result of cystic degeneration within an inflamed thickened sinus lining it is commonly found on a panoramic radiograph as well defined non corticated smooth dome shaped radio break mass originating within the maxillary sinus uh if you would know that uh, if you would have studied radiology you would know that maxillary sinus is basically a radio lucent area any pathology that is found in maxillary sinus it will appear as radio opaque these lesions are asymptomatic and they require no treatment and here is the maxillary retention uh says that you can actually see so the next one we going to talk about is a cellulite or a cellulithiasis which is also known as a stone in the salivary gland or a duct now how it is basically formed it is basically as we know that the kid, uh, same as the kidney stones a stone in a salivary gland is formed by the collection of calcium carbonates and calcium phosphates in the form of hydroxyapatite around the nidus nidus means a bacterial collection it can cause swelling and pain now pain is experienced during salivary stimulation and is intensified at meal times uh, why at meal times because we know that when we are eating the more saliva is produced in the mouth so as it says that the pain is experienced during salivary stimulation so anything that leads to more uh, more saliva in the mouth will lead to uh, pain it occurs more often in the submandibular gland and duct and what is the best radiograph if anybody asks you in the exam it is the mandibular occlusal view treatment it is the surgical excision of the cellulite and this is how it looks like in the mouth uh, it is the, there is one in the floor of the mouth now the next one we going to talk about is necrotizing cellulite metaplasia again a very important one mostly uh, students uh, like the students that i also teach they confuse this as uh, you know and uh, uh, as a as a uh, carcinoma or something like that but it is totally benign it is not a metaplasia uh, it is benign in nature um, and lots of questions do come on this topic now it is a locally destructive inflammatory condition of the salivary gland it manifest as an asymptomatic necrotic ulcerated area mostly involving the palatal mucosa the origin is of this uh, is still being debated however it is thought to be due to ischemia of the minor salivary glands uh now lesion it is a lesion it is basically a lesion of the minor salivary gland after establishing the diagnosis by a biopsy no treatment is necessary it is a very important point uh, by exam uh, inbd exam that you make sure the diagnosis is done by biopsy and when you are sure that it is necrotizing cellulometaplasia you do not need to do any treatment it is a self limiting disease and it heals on its own over the over 5 to 6 years most um, students do confuse it with when they see this uh, lesion in the mouth in the palatal mucosa they think that oh it's a carcinoma it's a uh it's a oral cancer but no it is benign in nature and it heals by its own so in the picture this is how it will look like it is in the palatal mucosa you can see that it is being necrotic and all that what we studied just in the previous slide so this is all about for today for the salivary gland uh, guys um i will be continuing with the salivary glands tomorrow as well and will be uploading a video i hope this will help uh, you guys with your exam and if you have any questions please feel free to comment in the comment section or, uh, or you can even follow me on instagram under the same name as inbd twitter so thank you and have a great day